it seems like the big thing to talk about now. Pretty much, in my opinion, the NVIDIA versus AMD 2.0 is now happening with backwards compatibility with the next Nintendo Switch system. Now, for those who don't know, give you a little bit of a history lesson that back before the Nintendo Switch came out, there used to be this big argument whether Nintendo was using AMD as the graphics provider for the Nintendo Switch or if they were using nvidia rumors that came up that they were using nvidia there was somebody else that was saying no it's amd and there was this big back and forth kind of civil war on twitter and everything now i was obviously part of that there's still videos on the channel and also the infamous live stream where we actually found out what the switch was nintendo switch nintendo switch <laughs> the switch is on undetachable controllers Okay, let's see. Wow. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we are going to get it, David. <laughs> Maybe. That was just super funny. Just check it out on the channel if you haven't done so already. I'll have a link to it as well in the description because it's fantastic. But now we have essentially the second version of that. Not on the bigger scale here, not quite as large at this point. But I think that leading up to the launch of the Nintendo Switch 2, it's going to intensify with videos and tweets and comments. And I wanted to give my two cents, at least in a video format here. Now, I did talk about it a little bit with the Pokemon leak that happened because in that Pokemon leak, the guy who pretty much got everything right with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC, the Pokemon names, everything. Put a little snippet of information at the very end of that saying that they are working on a patch, a graphics patch for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet on the next Nintendo system. Then he clarified later in a post saying, hey, this is the next generation or the next Nintendo Switch system. And he just wanted to make sure that that's what he was talking about and everyone knew it was that. So a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet patch for graphics on the next system. So it's a patch. So since it's a patch, that means, well, you can already play the game on the system natively, which would be Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which would be your copy that you already own. Whether that's the physical copy or the digital copy, you're just going to download a patch. I don't think it would be just for digital copies of the game that doesn't really make sense so i talked about backwards compatibility there and was like hey is it confirmed based off of that because this guy got everything right when it comes to pokemon scarlet and violet dlc down to the name to the actual name of the dlc so clearly this person has that information but i wanted to give my two cents on this because there's been videos popping up left and right, MVG, shout out to my man MVG. MVG is a Switch developer in addition to PlayStation and Xbox. He knows development tools and all of that. He's very well aware of it. And he wasn't so sure, based on his video, he wasn't so sure if there's going to be backwards compatibility on the Nintendo Switch 2. But then he also gave routes on how they can actually get this done. So it was a little bit of a don't assume it, it's going to be difficult, but here's how I think it could be done video, which kind of just stoked the flames of, oh my gosh, it's not going to have it. And then other people kind of swooped in afterwards, obviously to capitalize on that. We had a video from RGT, shout out to RGT, homie on the channel, talk about how, oh, Nintendo, you know, they might not have a financial reason to do this. Like it might be in their favor to not have backwards compatibility make people buy the same games over and over like all this other stuff that i mean i guess you can say that but doesn't really fit with nintendo's history in terms of what they've done before but it's a possibility right and then also my man nintendo prime nate you know he put out a video saying well no there's no problem at all like they can just do what they've always done before i know andre seegers from game explain he talked about how there's zero percent chance that they're not going to do backwards compatibility considering that they've done it before and all of that so there's been a lot of discussion and then you know once you have all this discussion then you have the people kind of coming through saying well nintendo's stupid they always do different and weird things and dumb things so therefore i can see them doing that because they're dumb and i'm smart you know we have those people on twitter that um <laughs> that kind of come in and say stuff like that you know um so it's interesting it's interesting nonetheless so i wanted to give my two cents on it as someone who's been covering nintendo now for a decade plus at this point and one thing that i think that people forget 
you know, is that Nintendo's done backwards compatibility a lot. A lot of people have a recency bias when it comes to Nintendo, and they'll look at just what happened recently, and they won't really look back in the history of things. Since the Switch has been around for so long, and Nintendo's been reselling Wii U games for so long, people just automatically go towards that. But if you put yourself in the mindset of coming off of a successful system in the modern era of Nintendo, they've pretty much always done backwards compatibility. So if we can go back and look at the different systems here, you have the GameCube to the Wii. There was backwards compatibility there, and the GameCube wasn't even a popular system, but they still did it. Although, obviously, the chips were very similar in terms of what they were using, power PC architecture, stuff like that, but they decided to just go ahead and put backwards compatibility there, later took it out, but pretty much there was a ton of Wii sold with backwards compatibility and GameCube controller ports. Then you have the Wii to the Wii U, which there is backwards compatibility there as well. No GameCube, but Wii backwards compatibility in addition to support for Wii remotes as well and controllers. So that was obviously good. And if you go back to, let's just say the GBA, right? We'll go to the GBA. GBA to the DS, they had two cartridge slots. You had a cartridge slot for the DS games. You had a cartridge slot for the big Game Boy Advance games. So backwards compatibility there. I think they later took it out as well, but that was after a number of systems have been sold. And then from the DS to the Nintendo 3DS, you also have backwards compatibility as well. So Nintendo actually has a very long history over the course of a long time with multiple systems having backwards compatibility. And you can even go back to the Game Boy, Game Boy Color if you really wanted to go uh, all the way back then. But for the most part, Nintendo's always doing that. And if you look at what they're doing right now with their ecosystem and their business, it's my opinion. Now, I could still be wrong on this one, so I'm not sitting here and saying that all these people that are saying that it's not gonna happen are wrong or anything. But if you look at the ecosystem and the business of the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't really make any sense for Nintendo to try to spend resources, time, and effort on reporting games that are already perfectly playable and fine using the same graphics manufacturer with NVIDIA. They're going to go with NVIDIA. They're going to go with the stronger chip. And I think that Nintendo and NVIDIA can kind of come together and make something work, whether that's putting the X1 on the board or emulating it or doing something in order to get that to work because they've done it so many times before. So in my opinion, I think that there's just going to be stock backwards compared compatibility because Nintendo's looking at the ecosystem and saying hey look we can still sell these games to new consumers the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is not a dual launching title I think that if they really wanted to kind of resell everything in terms of having another version of the game which is what people are saying that they're going to do I think they would have just waited and delayed the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to be a dual launch so they can just get that version ready and then launch it right then and there with the next system but the fact that they're launching it in may and just saying whatever kind of tells me that they don't mind because people will still buy the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom even on the new system and they could do like a performance patch or it could just brute force it to run better based on what they're doing with the architecture and everything so that's really my key or indicator that's the major thing to me that tells me it's probably going to be backwards compatible and on top of that nintendo's still releasing software throughout this year and like a lot of software we have multiple games coming out so it's not like they're holding back stuff or kind of delaying things out they're just releasing the games normally so something tells me based off of that that you're pretty much just going to be able to play those games on the next Nintendo Switch. Now you also have to factor in that Nintendo has already talked about this a bit, and I know RGT and other people like to make fun of it like with the graph and all that, but just speaking generally on this, when it comes to investors, it's one thing to say something, I guess, like on Twitter, when it comes to what Nintendo says, or on a website or whatever, but it's another thing to talk to investors in terms of what your plan is and what you're going to do. And based off of the Nintendo Switch Online and them essentially talking pretty much in depth about what they have to do or what their plans are going forward with nintendo switch online and accounts and carrying over things to kind of maintain that long relationship with the accounts and your games and what transfers over and talk about how they're going to do that that tells me that you're going to be able to transfer over your digital games transfer over your nso games stuff like that you know so to me it really makes sense for them to do that just like before with the nintendo switch you know nintendo switch there was a lot of things that were questions beforehand or the nx you can say is it going to be region locked people were saying oh it's going to be region locked they've region locked all the other systems nintendo never makes the right decision right and switch wasn't region locked people are saying oh well they're not going to bring over all their games even though they combined their home console and portable division but they did bring over all their games right some people were actually scared that they're not going to have some of their biggest games 
that were on the portable system just because because they're going to make a new successor to the 3ds in addition to the switch so they can charge people for double systems yes that was a narrative that was out there guys there was a narrative where people were saying that nintendo 3ds is going to get a successor nintendo's going to reveal it and they're going to start charging for both and all that so yes that was a narrative and last night with the forced motion controls and things like that people were thinking that nintendo was going to force joy con controls and all of that when it comes to their games they never really did that at all either because that was a big issue with some wii u stuff with forcing the gamepad and also the wii forcing wii remote controls and ultimately most games have regular standard controls along with motion controls if it's supported or not so these are some of the things that nintendo has fixed up from the previous generations and if you look at who they have in charge i think that furukawa man this guy is an old school type of get whatever is the most efficient done and i think that he knows that if you look at like the ecosystem and the amount of money that they're making it makes complete sense to give people the option to be able to buy all of that because at launch i'm not sure how many games they're going to have what is nintendo going to have to buy and they know and furukawa knows they can probably have a very big jump on the next generation generation if you have all of those games available for people to purchase right then and there especially if there's some upgrades or enhancements or if people just want to catch up on stuff that they missed out on and buy the new system so i expect furukawa to get that done with their engineers with nvidia and like i stated before like i don't think that was necessarily a huge problem beforehand because these same issues or problems that i watched in mvg's video they have been apparent with all systems it's not just nintendo it's with microsoft it's with sony it's with nintendo before with what they've done with the previous systems this is not a unique issue or problem simply just for nintendo or for the switch to the next switch this is a issue per se for any system that's trying to do backwards compatibility for the most part outside of obviously like what pc does and things like that so nintendo's always had to deal and most companies have always had to deal with unique challenges on getting systems backwards compatible it's not always a guaranteed thing but most systems have had to deal with that and got it done in one way or another so i know like sony for example right there was no backwards compatibility for the ps3 to the ps4 and ps3 still to this day for sony has created a problem for them to get it running native on the newer systems past the ps3 so ps4 and also ps5 it's still streaming you can't just have it native support on there so there are times when it's just too much when it comes to what they're trying to do but for the most part i think that that issue was with the wii u to the switch just because the format changed the format change and what they're doing with the cartridges compared to the optical disc that they were using beforehand and also just what they were doing overall with the system itself and they also changed graphics manufacturers architecture and also who was providing the graphics for the nintendo wii u was very different from nvidia and tegra and what they're doing there with the hybrid system so that's kind of my thoughts on it I still feel that, you know, it could not have it for whatever reason or not. Um, I think probably the only reason why it wouldn't have that backwards compatibility is if they are trying to keep the Switch around as a smaller or cheaper option and that the next Switch was a more bigger, powerful box to directly compete power-wise and graphics and all that with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series. That would be the only reason why I think that they probably wouldn't have that type of backwards compatibility because they're trying to go for a little bit of a different market and keep the Switch around for something else. But I just don't think Nintendo's going to go in that way just because Furukawa is more of a safe businessman and I think he's going to want to take the route that got them success before while adding on top of that when it comes to their games and their design like the next Mario game or Mario Kart launching it with the strategy that made the Nintendo Switch so successful I don't think he's looking to take chances and like you can tell that by his personality right his personality is more of just a guy that's looking to make sure that they get the right thing done at the right time I mean I haven't even seen him since like he was first like announced 
bounce. When was the last time you even saw him? He doesn't show up in directs. He's not about all the goofy stuff or anything or being all weird about things. He just wants to get things done efficiently. So I think that that personality or that style bleeds down into how you're running things as a company and how you let people run things. So I think that the innovation and some of the stuff that they're going to do is based off the video games. And when it comes to system wise, they're going to have some quirky or unique things in there, but they're really going to make sure that it suits their customers that are buying now and what was the hype and momentum with what they've done so that's personally my thoughts on it guys once again like i said i could be wrong on it but i think that they're pretty much going to do that based off of what's happened before in the past uh when it comes to all of their past not just from the wii u to the switch um but we'll see once again we will see overall so what are your thoughts on this guys let me know in the comment section below if you want to check out any more of my videos talk about the nintendo switch 2 and what's going to happen i'll have links for you guys in the description and also right here on the page you can click on one of the videos thank you for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one peace out